everyone. I'm glad you're here with me today. Thank you very much. It's Thursday, November 16th, 2023. I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News, and I want to thank you for joining me. Here's an update what's going on there in Iceland with all the earthquakes. There's been 946 within the last 48 hours, some of them right underneath Grand Avic. What's interesting about this area where the fault line has opened up is that there is a ancient fault line that they covered up. I'm going to try and bring this over. Here's the image of it from 1957. Um, there's a Twitter post showing um, that they in fact covered this up. Here's the intersection and there was the intersection in the past. Yeah, and this is what it's currently looking like. Yeah, back in 1953, I believe it was. Oh, 1957. You can see the fault zone that runs through here. And, yeah, the intersection, etc. This here is the Twitter post. It says an old map of Grindavik from 1957 on the web map. It shows an old crack or sickle that goes through the whole town. We compared this to a drone video. Um, that was taken of the same area and the damage um, is on top of the old crack. There you go. Bet you didn't know too that this was an area of a temporary magnetic pole reversal that occurred about 190,000 years ago. An excursion is where there's only a temporary magnetic pole reverse and after maybe as, as short of a time as 200 years to maybe 7,000 years, the magnetic poles will reverse back to their original location. Could this be what's going on again up there in Iceland? Now, I've talked about magnetic pole reversals, how there would be signs of increased earthquakes, volcanic activity, things like that. This here is a map taken several years ago, and it shows the magnetic anomalies. Here we got the um, Atlantic Magnetic Anomaly where it divided up into two different sections. And I talked what a few years ago about the magnetic anomaly that was forming off the uh, of the United States. And up over here at the top, you know, we got you can see how it's going towards uh, Greenland and Iceland. China this last May put up uh, two new satellites. I'm so concerned they are about the coming magnetic pole reversal. Yeah. Um, they put up two satellites in May that are going to do a five-year study of the Earth's weakening magnetic field, which has supposedly weakened to about um, 10% over the last 200 years. There has been at least 12 short-term excursions um, since the last major uh, magnetic pole reversal, um, what, 780,000 years ago. And I've talked about how if we have another um, significant. It doesn't have to be a really significant solar eruption. Um, it could be the trigger for either a long-term or short duration magnetic pole reversal. You can see here we got a magnitude uh, 1.8 that occurred today. I just refreshed it and you can see there's multiple C's. We got C5. Um, that's probably the largest within the last a uh, few hours. So here's a list of some of the more recent earthquakes there. Uh, we got a 2.7. I don't know if that's the largest, a 2.1. Yeah, a lot of them you can see are in Grydavik area. Look at that. Yeah, so this 2.1, let me come back down. Where was it? Um, that was close to there. Okay, let me bring it down. What else do we have? We have a 2.5, uh, 3.7 kilometers northeast of Grindavik. So that would be about 2.3 miles. Let me bring it down a little bit farther and see what else we got here. Okay. Yeah, bear with me here as I go through this. Oh, we got a 2.9. Yeah, almost a 3. Uh, 3.4 kilometers northeast of Grindavik, right there. And what else did 
do we got? I got a video too I can show you of some damage to the inside of one of the homes there in Grindavik. Uh, okay. In my news update that I posted on Patreon and on Rumble, um, I showed um, drone videos that were flying over here. We got another one, 2.5, about the same distance from Grindavik. Um, what else? A so 2.4, that's in another location. Okay, looks like the 2.9 might be the largest. <laughs> I could go through this. There's, let's see, let me pull this up. 960 earthquakes, and then we got the map. I don't know if you can see that. Most of them have been off over here. All right, here's the video. It starts out. I don't know if you want me to make it larger for you or not, but you can see the cracking all the way through the house. He's looking through the wall and the ceiling, door frames, and more of the ceiling. Cracks going all the way through the ceiling of his home. Yeah, they built in an area that they probably didn't know had ancient fissures. I'll show you a video also of some reporters looking right down in the fissures. I'm surprised that they're allowing um, reporters in this area. Looks like a, a bed there. That must be a bedroom in the cupboards. Look at that. Yeah. Everything has moved. Yeah, that's a bedroom. Let's see. It's a lengthy video that they're documenting the damage to their home. The poor people. Wow. Yeah. They're probably allowing people because Iceland gets their tourism because of all the volcanic activity. But like I said, with the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field, are we seeing early signs of a magnetic pole reversal? Maybe a temporary one or um, a long-term one. The damage that it would cause to the Earth, uh, it would strip away um, our ozone if we had um, a CME off the sun. I'll look at this some more. I'll go into the damage that the Earth would um be affected by with uh, the damages look at the floors actually dropping you can see um yeah the um space at the bottom of the edge of the uh flooring there that he just showed yeah poor people the iceland basin excursion is the most frequently recorded geomagnetic excursion having been widely recorded in sentiments from the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. And it goes on to the areas. But what I want to point out here is the path that this temporary uh, magnetic pole reversal took. And it says that it tracks southward through Africa and the Atlantic realm with apparently a rapid return path through the Western Pacific, uh, clustered in the South African or Africa South Atlantic. That's where we got the um, anomaly. Um, during the onward path and in the Northwest Pacific during the return path and perhaps during the initial phase of the excursion. So here we have Africa where we have currently the um, anomaly, the two where the blobs broke up and we got the weakening of the magnetic field and it went up through here and then came back basically the same path. Now here it talks about the Iceland Basin event which occurred, they said, about 186,000 years ago. And it lasted for about 7,000 years. So you would have effects upon the Earth for 7,000 years. Luckily for right now, the Earth's magnetosphere, the ionosphere, and the atmosphere do a great job in protecting us from most hazards that may come off from the sun and space effects. But if a CME arrives, during a time when our, our magnetic shields are down. It can produce geomagnetic storms, which in turn can cause anomalies and disruptions to the modern conveniences, conveniences we have come to rely on. Not just the animals who depend on the uh, magnetic field to know which way to fly and migrate. Um, it also would induce currents in long wires like power lines, potentially leading to widespread blackouts in extreme cases. 
Some of you might remember that on March 13, 1989, a powerful geomagnetic storm triggered a major power blackout in Canada and left 6 million people without electricity for 9 hours. That flare disrupted electrical power transmission from the Hydro-Quebec generating station and even damaged some power transformers in New Jersey. A similar event would disrupt water and wastewater distribution centers perishable foods and medication production, heating and air conditioning and electrical lighting systems, computer systems, telephone systems, and communication systems, including disruptions in airline flights, satellite networks and GPS service, public transportation systems, fuel distri distribution systems, and fuel pipelines and basically all electrical systems that do not have backup power. It would also strip part of our air from our planet, increase in radiation, and the energy that would penetrate the Earth would be very harmful to life. Airplanes really depend on GPS and it would affect that. Knowing where to land I think would be highly important. And there's many types of animals that depend on that magnetic field to know where to uh, migrate to, such as birds, fish, sea turtles, um, and other types of animals. Our magnetic north has shifted from moving at about 10 miles a day to about 34 miles a day. There's also speculation that the last champs event, which occurred between 42,000 and 41,000 years ago, um, what is what caused the last um, glacier period. That short-term magnetic pole reversal lasted approximately 250 years. The loss of the geomagnetic shield is claimed to have contributed to the extinction of the Australian megafauna. I did a report about that oh, a while ago. Those of you that follow me will remember when I showed the trees that were affected um, by that event and the extinction of the Neanderthals and the appearance of cave art. Um, I fell upon another cave art where they were painting themselves with red okra and it was speculated that the red okra would protect them from the sun's intense rays and the radiation. This latest solar event you can see here is only going to skim by the side of the earth and if you watch down here at the bottom you'll see how it'll pass us. It's not going to be a um, any type of impact on the earth. Right there, see that? I'll give you a link to this. It says ancient cowrie trees reveal a turning point in earth's history 42,000 years ago. Ionized air, which is a great conductor for electricity, would also have increased frequency of electrical storms. Um, unfiltered radiation from space rips apart the air's particles in the Earth's atmosphere, separating electrons and emitting light and producing ionization, um, somewhat said one of the professors who did this paper. Um, the ionized air fried the ozone layer, triggering, triggering a ripple of climate change across the globe. Researchers theorize that the dramatic environmental changes may have caused early humans to seek more shelter. That could explain the sudden appearance of cave art around the world according roughly around 42,000 years ago. Um, we think the sharp increase in UV levels, particularly during solar storms, would suddenly make cave very valuable shelters. Yeah, and they talk about the red orca handprints may signal it was being used as sunscreen. Remember, I was talking about that. A technique still used today by some groups. So something to think about. Are we going to be going into, um, hopefully, a short-term excur excursion? I'm all tongue-tied, I'm sorry. Um, but will it be a signal for a longer event? I don't know. Yeah, how many, I bet you not very many of you heard about this 
Iceland Basin event. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for support. Yeah, thank you very much. I got some PayPal contributions um, this week. Yeah, you know who you are. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Please stay safe. And I will talk to you later. Bye.